All right, everyone, welcome back and bear down. Thanks again for tuning in. As always, I appreciate every one of you who tune in. If you don't mind hitting the like button, I truly appreciate when you do. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so because I do want to continue to grow this channel. Today's topic is going to be one that I've already hammered home. You wouldn't think I could hammer home on it anymore, but it's one I want to hit a little bit more because you see some of the other pundits and analysts analyzing the cornerback position. And it's one that's so subjective, one that's hard to really nail down, unlike quarterbacks who throw the most yards, most touchdowns, least interceptions, or wide receivers who have the most yards, or even defensive ends who have the most sacks and give up the least broken tackles. And that's all easily quantifiable. The cornerback position, when they come into the NFL, is one of the hardest ones to determine and grade coming out of college because it's such a different game than in college. And it's really, there's so much to analyze. It's really off of tape. And there's so many things that don't get analyzed enough about the cornerback position. So we're going to hit that today. We're going to try to go through it fairly quickly. And we're going to determine who the top 10 cornerbacks in the NFL are off recency. Now, I get a lot of them want to use previous years, 2020 through 2022, to say, well, this is the best cornerback right now. This guy, I mean, look at his 20 through 22. I'm going to use this last year for recency on the top cornerbacks in the league. Now, obviously there's some flaws with this because certain cornerbacks like Trevon Diggs and JC Horn, who were injured the majority of last year, if not all of last year, won't really be included in this. And they are potentially top, you know, 10 cornerbacks in this league. So this kind of, there is some fallacy with this, but I really want to judge based off last year, who are the top corners in the league? We're in the dead period of this of the off season where teams are, on vacation, people are getting their rest before they get into training camp. And where this basis comes from is from PFF and Pro Football Network putting out their rankings. Now, the other ones will too. And you've seen a little bit from different analysts from ESPN and Yahoo Sports. They're all going to have their rankings by the end of the year. But none of them have an actual basis. Why did we come up with this rankings 1 through 10? So I want to do that today. I want to base why we have one through 10. So here's PFN on the left. Here's who they say are the top 10 corners in the league. Number one, Sauce Gardner. Number two, Patrick Sertan. Number three, Jalen Ramsey. Number four, Jalen Johnson. Number five, Traverius Ward. Six, Legereus Sneed. Seven, Trent McDuffie. Eight, Denzel Ward. Nine, Deron Bland. 10, DJ Reed. And you can see how much it varies even amongst analysts when you look at PFFs. Now they have Sauce Gardner number one as well. Trent McDuffie at number two, who was number seven on PFNs. Traverius Ward, number three, who was number five. Patrick Sertan, who's number four, who was number two on PFNs. Jalen Johnson, number five, who was number four on PFNs. Jalen Ramsey, number six, who was number three on PFNs. Jair Alexander Ander, uh, from the Packers, who wasn't ranked on PFNs. Kendall Fuller, who wasn't ranked as well. Michael Carter the second from the Jets, who wasn't rated. And Teron Johnson from the Bills, who wasn't rated as well. So there's a lot of variance. It's not clean cut. It's pretty easy to see who the top wide receivers in the league are, who the top quarterbacks in the league are. But at cornerback position, a lot of these analysts differ quite a bit. You know, their number 20 could be number one on another list. While this is pretty solely focused on NFL-wide cornerback video, I do want to hit up the Bears at cornerback this year and the secondary in general. The, the blue ones are the highlighted starters for the Bears, and I just want to point out, we have them locked up at least the next two years together. We have an opportunity here to build cohesion with this young unit to be able to build something special. Obviously, we know Jalen Johnson signed his long-term contract. He's in here for a while. Tyreek Stevens is only on his second year. Kyler Gordon's on his third year of his rookie deal. Same with Jaquan Brisker and Kevin Byard just signed a two-year contract with the Bears. So for the next two years, this secondary is locked down for the Bears. If you haven't seen a previous video, I'm going to put a link in the bio. That focuses a lot on Tyreek Stevenson. I'm not going to focus too much on him today, but if you look at his second half of the season, he ranked among the top 10 in all cornerbacks in the entire league the second half of the year. So this is the video screen from that. I'm going to put the link in the, in the description here, but it shows how all the Bears players did and how he did the second half of the year. If you look at the second half of the year, four interceptions, one first, one full, one forced fumble, uh, all in the second half of the year. His pass rating allowed dropped significantly once he got his rookie legs underneath him. He was causing receivers to have less receptions, and he was overall a ball hawk the second half of the year. 
In fact, if you stack him up against the other rookies in the league, even including Terrell Smith, who got quite a few snaps uh, for the Bears as a third option for a cornerback, you, you see how they compared. 52% receptions against him was number one against rookies the second half of the season. 55.7 passer rating allowed was number one among rookies the second half of the season. Four interceptions, number one amongst, amongst rookies the second half of the season. So you see these rookies and you see the way they adapt. He fully embraced his role and he was not scared. He understood what it took to be a cornerback in the National Football League. So I expect big things out of him. People say he could be the breakout player of the year for the Bears. I say he already broke out. I've been preaching that for months. It all makes sense if you look at it, if you analyze it and you break it down for him. All right, so let's give some basis to this. How am I going to make my cornerback grades? So number one, the biggest thing in cornerbacks for me is their NFL passer rating against them, which is not included very much in other analyst breakdowns of cornerbacks. But if you're locked down, if you're stopping quarterbacks from getting the ball to your receiver and the corner is absolutely locking them down, they're going to have a low passer rating against them. So that's my number one. Number two is turnovers created. You can change the game by getting the ball turned over. You often see it over and over again. Whoever has the most turnovers in the game wins the game. Cornerback is one of the best positions to be able to, to create those turnovers. Interceptions are the easiest way to get the ball from the other team. Number three is tackling. And number four, penalties. Penalties can kill a drive. Especially deep penalties against a cornerback can really hurt a team and, and make the, the field position battle be lost. And so then I've also taken into consideration the PFF rating. So let's jump right into it. These are my top 10 cornerbacks from last year that I rank in the National Football League. All right, right off the bat. We're going to start off with honorable mentions, but guys, I'm going to tell you right now, next week after this video has been out for a couple days, I'm going to release a non-monetized, meaning I'll make no money off of it, top 10 with video highlights. I have done everything above and beyond to try to make this work and get past YouTube. They aren't allowing it. They are not having it. They're saying I can't show highlights. I don't. I'm gonna have to look more into this and figure out the whys. But for now, I'm just gonna show you who they are. We'll go through it. You can have the top rankings, and next week I'll release with video and sound, with audio and video, uh, my top ten, which will be a five or six minute video. But I'll, I'll release that next week. But for now, here's your honorable mentions. Number one, Christian Benford from Buffalo, who I think is highly underrated. Not enough people know about him. Michael Carter the second from the New York Jets. Mike Hilton from Cincinnati, Martin Emerson Jr. from Cleveland, Cam Taylor Britt from Cincinnati. At number 10, you've got Sauce Gardner, 76.5 NFL pass rating against, zero interceptions, one forced fumble, 88.6 PFF grade, and 16.2 missed tackle percentage. But he is a ball hawk. He, is, he reminds me very much of Jalen Johnson before Jalen Johnson started getting his actual turnovers, interceptions. Uh, Sauce Gardner is in on a lot of plays. He's in on a lot of plays where he should have had interceptions that he didn't have interceptions. Number nine, Jalen Ramsey. 52.9 NFL pass rating against. Three interceptions, 65.6 PFF grade, and an 8.3 missed tackle percentage. Number eight, Steven Nilsson, Houston. 69.1 NFL pass rating against. Five interceptions, 72.6 PFF grade, 10.3 missed tackle percentage. Number seven, Paulson Adebo. He kind of had the Bears number last year as well. He uh, he got Tyson Bajan a couple times. 69.9 NFL pass rating against, four interceptions, two forced fumbles, 78.6 PFF grade, and a 6.1 missed tackle percentage. Number six, Rasul Douglas. 73.1 NFL pass rating against, five interceptions, one forced fumble, 81.0 PFF grade and a 13.6 mass missed tackle percentage. Let's just be glad he's not in Green Bay anymore. Number five, we're going to have Derek Stingley Jr. from Houston. 76.6 NFL pass rating against, five interceptions, 82.1 PFF grade, 13.3 missed tackle percentage, and only one penalty. Highly overlooked. That's very important when you're playing the field position game and when – Teams are driving and you get a penalty and it gives them an automatic field goal or touchdown. That is huge. And the same can be said for number four, Darius Williams, who had zero penalties on the year. Now, he didn't play all at 17 games, but zero penalties is still very impressive. 69.6 NFL passer rating against him. Four interceptions, one forced fumble, 79.5 PFF grade, 12.1 missed tackle percentage. 
Number three, Charvarius Ward, Niners. 63.7 NFL pass rating against five interceptions, one forced fumble, 84.7 PFF grade, 6.8% missed tackle percentage. Very, very low. All right, the next one might upset some Bears fans, but there is basis behind everything. You have to understand, I did articulate a formula for this. Number two, Jalen Johnson. NFL leading 33.3 NFL pass rating against him. He was locked down. Quarterbacks could not throw against him. Four interceptions, one forced fumble, 90.8 PFF grade, but he did have a rough second half of the year with his tackling, 17.5 missed tackle percentage. Honestly, all it would have taken was a little better tackling or one of those pick six that he dropped going to the house. Like one one of those, just a couple more interceptions. He would have been the, the number one cornerback in the league last year. But you can't overlook Deron Bland. Deron Bland last year had a rec- record-setting year, literally. NFL record five pick six on the year. Nine interceptions total. He was everywhere for the Cowboys, and he kept them in the game with the turnover battle. The turnover battle cannot be expressed enough how important that can be for a team. You win the turnover battle, you have an automatic leg up on the game. 52.6 NFL pass rating against him, 89.5 PFF grade, and 9.0 missed tackle percentage. He truly had a special year. That's why I have him ranked as the number one defensive back cornerback this last year. Now, I know some Bears fans are going to be upset that Jalen Johnson was not number one, but I put actual I actually have a formula for it. I'm not going to make it boring on this video. Put a formula behind it between the tackling, the penalties, the interceptions, the NFL pass rating against everything I took into consideration and made a formula for and it really did clarify where all the cornerbacks in the league stood. But the one exciting thing for the Bears fans to be excited about is all four of the main corners on this team, even including backup Terrell Smith, who got significant enough snaps to qualify for a grade we're in the top 40 of the entire league in this grading. Number two, Jalen Johnson. Number 28, Terrell Smith. Number 35, Kyler Gordon. Number 40, Tyreek Stevenson. And if you remember from earlier in the video, the way Tyreek Stevenson came along throughout the year, I personally, now this is an opinion-based part, I personally believe Tyreek Stevenson is a top 10 corner in the league, and we're going to have Jalen Johnson and Tyreek Stevenson there. With Kyler Gordon rounding it out, and Terrell Smith is a very capable backup, the Bears secondary, the Crucible, is in very good hands. All right, just to give you guys a little bit of basis of some of the things that we graded off of, I'm not going to go the whole formula and break down everything for you, but it was a combination of things. Uh, you can see here the top graded PFF players from this last year were Jalen Johnson, number one, Deron Bland, number two, Sauce Gardner, Trent McDuffie, Traverius Ward, Devin Witherspoon, Ken- Kendall Fuller, Christian Benford, Derek Stingley Jr., and Isaac Yedham. And then the NFL pass rating against leaders. Jalen Johnson really stood above anybody else this last year, 33.3. So when quarterbacks targeted against him, they were only they only had a 33.3 NFL pass rating against. <laughs> That's crazy. Deron Bland, 52.6. Jalen Ramsey, Martin Emerson Jr. from Cleveland, Traverius Ward, Legereus Sneed, Cam Taylor Britt, Steven Nelson, Marlon Humphrey, Darius Williams. So basically, if guys were on both of those two lists so far, they were pretty much guaranteed to be on uh, the top list that we just went through. Uh, and then also, cornerbacks with at least four interceptions or more this last year. These are all of them. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It looks like we had 11 with the ties. So Deron Bland had nine, and again, five return for pick six, which is crazy. The Sewell Douglas, Traverius Ward had five. Derek Stingley Jr. had five. Steven Nelson had five. Uh, Paulson Adebo had four. Tyreek Stevenson had four. Darius Williams had four. Cam Taylor Britt had four. Jalen Johnson had four. And Martin Emerson Jr. had four. And then lastly, here is the top 40 rankings. Low score is better. And you can see Deron Bland and Jalen Johnson really set themselves apart from the rest of the league this year with both pass rating against, turnovers created, their PFF grade. Everything about them was very solid this last year. Uh, 23, 26, those are just crazy numbers with the formula that I created. Uh, anything below 100 is really, really good. And so you can see here's the top 40 on this list here. All really, really good players, but this is how they performed last year. Uh, you guys saw the top 10 in the video. Here's the top 40. If you want to pause it, you can do that. But this is the top 40 from this last year, and the top 40 ranked going into the next year. 
Thank you so much for tuning in. If you don't mind hitting that like button, I truly appreciate it. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. I really want to put out more stuff like this, so I appreciate you guys tuning in. Please do so and join the community. And until next time, claws up and bear.